Hello everyone, I'm Maria Petrashko from the Television News Agency. We hear so much about freedom of speech in the countries of the collective West, which for some reason lecture others and make remarks like, you have censorship. But behind the catchy slogan, freedom of speech, lies a much harsher censorship, dismissal and discrimination against journalists. And I won't even list the numerous cases of unjustified blocking, for example, Russian NGOs in the West. I will recall real facts about Western journalists. The host of the American TV channel MSNBC, Phil Donahue, criticized the war in Iraq in 2003 and was quickly dismissed. MSNBC is owned by General Electric, one of the largest companies in the USA producing weaponry. All media in the USA and Britain are either controlled by large transnational corporations or by the government, like the BBC. And corporations that commission music don't need honest journalists with independent investigations. They need those who work in their own interests. What's even worse, Western intelligence agencies and authorities bring their own people into leading media outlets. The Telegraph newspaper reported that for many years the British security agency MI5 has been vetting the appointments at the BBC. The Central Intelligence Agency of the United States and media insiders have acknowledged that the CIA used numerous agents who held top leadership positions in the most important news organizations in the USA. Former Minister of Education and current Member of Parliament Michael Gove worked and continues to work at The Times. Boris Johnson also worked as the editor of Spectator before becoming the Foreign Secretary. Johnson also worked as the Brussels correspondent for The Telegraph, which likely prepared him well for his subsequent role in the forefront campaign for Brexit. That is the reason why we do not see headlines in Western media such as USA and Britain committing more military crimes in the Middle East or thousands of NATO mercenaries killing people in Donbass. We don't hear about the discrimination against Julian Assange, who was punished for speaking the truth. By the way, one can also take into consideration the cynical cruelties of the fake democratic values as a symbol of hypocrisy and the prolonged persecution of Julian Assange solely for his beliefs and journalistic activities, which have spanned over the course of several years. Washington provided reassurances, albeit half-hearted, that the prisoner of conscience would not face execution. However, they clarified that he could be imprisoned for a maximum of 175 years, but no longer. The tragedy of the American Chilean journalist Gonzalo Lira, who was tortured to death in Ukrainian prisons, did not touch anyone in the enlightened West. A really cool life hack. For example, if a politician wants to please Biden, they can purchase American oil, gas and weapons at inflated prices. How to persuade people of the correctness of these wrong decisions? Through media. The trend of limited freedom of speech is widespread in all countries of the West. If you, as a reporter, work either in state-funded media, financed through compulsory licensing fees, or in large private media companies, you cannot write what you want and what you feel. There are certain recommendations. Roughly speaking, everyone knows that newspapers like Pringer, Bild and Diebold will not publish articles that are extremely critical of Israel. They have no chance there because you need to sign a statement that you are pro-Israeli, that you will not question the existence of the state of Israel or the Israeli point of view, and so on. And if a journalist tells the truth, they will end up like Tucker Carlson, getting fired but remaining beloved by viewers. And now, a commercial break. A break indeed for honest and free journalism. If in Belarus the media are not dependent on advertisers, then in countries of exemplary democracy, the press is sometimes 100% financed by advertisers, namely multinational corporations and funds, and they set the tone. For example, let's take the Randon Group, one of the key PR firms supporting the propaganda efforts of the USA during recent wars. In the 80s, she conducted PR aimed at overthrowing the president of Panama, Manuel Noriega. The Randon Group also obtained international support for the first Gulf War and in the 1990s established the Iraqi National Congress. Belarus is completely aware of the pseudo-independence of the work of pro-Western resources that spread falsehoods and coordinate protests against the government. Who benefits from civil war and the loss of the country's sovereignty? Who gains new billions in their bank accounts? But to fall for cheap and cynical tricks from Western governments and transnational corporations or not to fall for them? It's everyone's choice, and this choice should be made today already, 